So here's the ESP8266. This particular version is the 12E version. And the first thing we'll need to do is to solder this up. And I'm going to solder this in a quite an unconventional way, but you'll see now. Okay, to solder this in, I'm going to use a breadboard. And this is just going to hold the pins in place. So I've got this thing soldered up now. And you can see there's the module and that's how I've soldered the pieces on, pieces of wire. And now pretty much they're going to go into the, the breadboard like this. I'll just curve those round, plug them into the breadboard. I need to slice the ends off the wires or strip the wires. And this is how I'm going to do that. Just make it a little cut like that. And then when I bite it, it'll just pull straight off. Like that. You can see it's quite a good cut. Quite even. Right then. So I'll just put these back together nicely. And there we go. Bend these round again. Okay, you should be able to easily put that into a breadboard now. Now for some planning. So these are some pins that are quickly written down which we'll need to know about. So RX to TX, that's this one here and this one here. We'll need to connect those to the UART device. GPIO 0, that's to be pulled down to ground, which is This one. GPO 15. So that's going to be pulled down. Ground, which is, which is this one here, is going to ground. RST, which is this one here, we need to do something special with. Well, potentially, anyway. I've got in here RTS on UR and ground via tact. If you want manual, do it this way. If you want automatic, do it this way. But you need to have a, maybe only certain UART can do it. Um, the EN, uh, or sometimes power down, or whatever it's called, EN is there. That needs to be pulled up. And VCC, which is this one there, needs to be pulled, uh, well, not pulled up, directly on 3.3 volts. 
There's actually another thing we need to do too. We need to put a capacitor between VCC and ground. And that capacitor is going to be a 0 0.1 UF capacitor. So I'll do that now. So here's the capacitor and I need to connect VCC to ground using this. This needs to be as close as possible to the module. And this should be the end result. Capacitor between VCC and ground. So far so good. The breadboard, the ESP8266 module with a capacitor on it, a selection of these little jumper leads, a big capacitor, this is a 1000 microfarad 35 volt capacitor, it's fairly big. Um, you don't necessarily need this size, this obviously 35 volts, the unit is for it's designed for 3.3 volts, so 35 volts is overkill, and also 1000 microfarads, that's also overkill, but anyway, the bigger capacitors seem to work better. Some resistors, these particular ones are 5 kilo ohm, you can get away with anything between 3 to 10 kilo ohm, I believe, I chose 5. A voltage regulator. This is an AMS 1117 3.3 volt regulator. Again, with this regulator, I've noticed that there are issues with it potentially. And I've used this and a power supply unit. And I think really the power supply unit is better. But, um, yeah, generally speaking, you're going to need one of these because if your power supply unit gives too much voltage or whatever, you'll blow the whole unit, the whole ESP8266. So, even though I don't think these are brilliant for the ESP, they do protect it to some degree. You'll need a FTDI UART, and the lead to go with it, you'll need that too. Um, you'll need some sort of power supply unit. I mean, I don't know if you could use an adapter, um, a DC, uh, you know, one of those DC adapters. You could use a power supply unit like I am. It doesn't really matter. You could even use batteries, actually. But um, I'm going to use a power supply unit, and because I'm using that, I'm going to need these jumpers. And And that's it, really. So let's get started. So there's my breadboard. Just before I start as well, there's one thing that I need to try and point out. Um, try and keep the distance between the voltage regulator and VCC close. Try and keep them close together. I've noticed that it works a lot better if you do that. Anyway, to start with, I'll put the regulator in. So the pin out on this is ground output source. So ground output source. So it makes sense if I put that in here. Ground output and source. Just double check. Ground output source. That's good. Then we want this huge capacitor in here too. I've got to be careful with the polarity as well. That can go in there. Then, might as well put the ESP in next. Make sure all those pins are in properly. We need, let's start with ground. We need ground, ground 
jump in straight to ground. Like that. Then GPIO 15, which is the one next to it, that's going straight to ground as well. But via a resistor, which in my case is 5k. Then the next one is GPIO 2, which we're not going to bother with. You can actually pull it up, but I'm not going to do that. So the next one after that is GPIO 0, which again is going to be pulled down. GPIO 0, we're pulling that down. Like that. Then the next one we have is, um, well, we use this third pin on this side, this is chip enable, which needs to be pulled up. So I'll put that in, put that in there. This needs to be pulled up. Move that along actually. Move that to there. Then <coughs> VCC goes straight to three point three volts. Now with the FTDI UART, we need to connect three things. We need to connect the RX pin, we need to connect the TX pin, and we need to connect ground. Okay, so the RX pin goes to TX, which is the first pin on this side. The TX pin goes to RX, which is the next one on this side. And ground goes straight to ground. And I'll plug this in, push it into this here. And one last thing. Um, the first pin on this side is the RST pin. That goes to RTS on the UART device. It's a little bit loose there actually, I'll move that over one. That goes to RTS, that's better. And now I'm going to connect the um, lead so that I can supply this, this with some power. So there's Ground and there's plus five or, or whatever I'm going to give it. Okay, and there we go. That is my um, my setup. I consider that to be minimal setup. So I'll just power this up now. So I'm using a voltage regulator, so that's about right, 5.1 volts. This one is plus. And now I'll just double check my wiring, make sure it's alright. And it looks fine to me. Oh, a word of caution, a word of warning here as well. Um, when you put these components close together, make sure that the leads don't short, because um, you can actually short things together. Like, there was one time I was messing with this, and I shorted a capacitor to a resistor, because they were so close together. It didn't do any damage, but it just... Uh, Starting drawing a lot of current. Anyway, so connect this to, connect this up now. Right, 
I'll get my laptop now and try this out. Okay, now if I click upload, it should work. Compiling sketch, uploading, and it is uploading. And it's done. Now I'll check the serial monitor. Okay, so you can see the serial monitor's up, but nothing's showing. So, the issue here now is that after it's flashed, what sometimes happens is that it will reboot and try and rebe reboot into normal mode and then run the script, or the sketch, or the code, or whatever you want to call it. It's not done that here. Um, but that's okay, this is what we have to do. I'll just move the camera. We have to remove the resistor from GPIO 0. So remove that. Then the yellow RTS pin, you take that out, it should restart. And you can hear my, uh, my PS, my power supply now. Doing something. I'll just reset that actually. If you touch the reset pin to ground and then let go, it restarts. You'll get a blink from the ESP as well. So I'll just do that again so you can see. So you get junk and then it says waiting for Wi Fi. A few dots. Client alive, blah blah blah, and it's working. And now you should be able to see my diagnostics on screen. So that's brilliant. So just a little bit of explanation now. I'll move over to the um, to the board so you can see again. Now this business with the resistor being pulled out and the reset pin being pulled out. What happens is that the ESP8266 um, when it reboots, it decides which mode it needs to boot into, and that can be the flash mode or the normal running mode. And when it resets with GPIO0 grounded, it boots into flash mode, which lets you flash. If it reboots with GPIO0 floating or VCC high, then it boots into normal mode, which is the normal running mode. So that's why I've been removing and putting that resistor back in, because that's the resistor which grounds GPIO 0 and then ungrounds it. This way, this way I've set up here, seems to be really, really reliable. Um, most reliable way I've ever had the SP8266 working. And I hope it works for you. If you need any more info, just write a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.